Let us discuss a question from number systems. Number systems is again a vast topic of quantitative aptitude. You generally have questions related to units digit, remainders, how to factorize factorials, the trailing zeros in a factorial, how to factorize the factorials and so on. Let us look at a question. How many factors of 2 raised to the power 4 multiplied with 3 raised to the power 5 multiplied with 10 raised to the power 4 are perfect squares which are greater than 1. So we have been given a number in the form of products 2 raised to the power 4 into 3 raised to the power 5 into 10 raised to the power 4. We want to find out how many factors of this number are perfect squares and are greater than 1, right? So two conditions, they have to be perfect squares and they also have to be greater than 1. So give this question a try. It's one of those uh, basic questions of prime factorization. So that's a hint for you. Pause the video, give it a try and then cross check it with the solution that we are going to be discussing. So as I said, the first thing or the first thought that should come to your mind is that this needs to be broken down into its prime factors. That means we want to prime factorize the given number, right? So 2 and 3 are primes, but 10 is not a prime. So we can further factorize this. So let's do that. This can be expressed as 2 raised to the power 4 into 3 raised to the power 5. 10 raised to the power 4 will be 2 raised to the power 4 into 5 raised to the power 4. So I have 2 raised to the power 8 into 3 raised to the power 5 into 5 raised to the power 4. This is the final number that has been given to us. Right. Now if I ask you to find out the total number of factors that this number has, how will you do that? If I ask you how many factors does this number have without any constraints, right? Forget about this part of the question. If we just had to find out the number of factors that this number has, how do we do it? We will add 1 to the powers and then multiply it, right? So we will be having 9 into 6 into 5. This is what I will be having. That is 270 factors. 270 factors, right? How do we arrive at this 270 or how do we arrive at this 9? We look at individually, let's look at the numbers. So 2 raised to the power 8 can be broken down as 2 raised to the power 0. That means we are talking about the powers that 2 can take, right? So 2 can take all powers from 0 to 8. 2 can take all powers from 0 to 8. And 0 to 8 is going to be how many numbers? It's going to be 9 numbers. So that's where we are getting this 9 from. Similarly, if I look at 3 raised to the power 5, then what are the different values of powers that this 3 can take up? It can take from 0 to 5. 0 to 5 is going to be 6 values. So we are going to get this 6 and the same thing for 5 raised to the power 4. So this is how we find out the number of factors that are there while if we don't have any constraints, right? However, in this question, they have given us constraint. What is the constraint? The factors need to be perfect squares. The factors need to be perfect squares. How is a number a perfect square or how do we determine that yes, it's a perfect square? The power of the number, right? So if I have a number like let's say 10 raised to the power 3, 10 raised to the power 3, right? So is this going to be a perfect square? No. How do we find that out? The power of this number, this needs to be divisible by 2, divisible by 2. So the values that this can take up are a 0, 2, 4, 6 and so on. Right, that's how we can determine that a number is going to be a power of 2. Similarly, if I think of a number, let's say uh, 17 raised to the power 4. So yes, this is going to be a perfect square. 70 raised to the power 40, that's also going to be a perfect square. But if I say 70 raised to the power, let's say 39, then I know it's not going to be a perfect square. This 17 raised to the power 39 can be written as 17 raised to the power 38 into 117, wherein this part alone is going to be a perfect square. Perfect square means 17 raised to the power 19 ka square will give me 17 raised to the power 32 and so on, right? This is how we determine it need, whether it's going to be a perfect square or not. So in this 2 raised to the power 8, how many perfect squares are there? That's what we want to find out. So this 2 raised to the power 8 
what are the different powers that this 2 can take up? We can take 2 raised to the power 0, 2 raised to the power 2, 2 raised to the power 4, 2 raised to the power 6, 2 raised to the power 8. So in total, there are 5 values that this 2 can take up. Is this clear? So I cannot take 2 raised to the power 1, 2 raised to the power 3, 2 raised to the power uh, 2 raised to the power 5, all of these values are not acceptable. Similarly, if we think about 3 raised to the power 5, then what are the values that this 3 can take up? 3 raised to the power 0, 3 raised to the power 2, 3 raised to the power 4. That's it. So 3 values. For 5 raised to the power 4, 5 raised to the power 0, 5 raised to the power 2, 5 raised to the power 4. So 3 values. So total number of factors which are perfect squares, number of factors which are perfect squares is going to be nothing but this 5 multiplied with a 3 multiplied with a 3. Right? This is nothing but 45. 45 number of factors which are perfect squares. But this 45 also includes the number 1. This is also going to include the number 1. What is that case when the number is going to be 1? When I have 2 raised to the power 0 into 3 raised to the power 0 into 5 raised to the power 0. If all of the powers are 0, if I take this particular case, then that will give me 1, right? Because all of this are 1, so it's 1 into 1 into 1, that's a 1. But we want factors which are greater than 1, so I need to exclude this case, right? So finally, the number of factors that we can find out which are greater than 1, right? Which are greater than 1 and are also perfect squares. So perfect squares greater than 1 is going to be 45 minus 1 that is 44. So that's going to be the final answer. What is this minus 1? We are excluding the case where the powers of 2, 3 and 5 all of them is going to be 0. Right? So I am excluding this case where 2 raised to the power 0, 3 is also raised to the power 0 and 5 is also raised to the power 0. Here's the practice question for you. You need to find out the units digit of 234 raised to the power 100 plus 234 raised to the power 101. Very easy and uh, a question of this kind has been asked in gate before. So give it a try. Leave your answers in the comment section below. I'll see you tomorrow with another question of quantitative aptitude. Till then take care.